Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about neural style transfer and how to do it quite easily using Google Collab. So if you have a Gmail account, you automatically have a Google Collab account and this is my Google Collab account. So uh, when you go into Google Collab, that's what you should uh, see. So you're gonna basically uh, open an, um, a notebook, a Python notebook. And in this case, we're gonna get it from GitHub. So here you enter Jeremy Koshua. And we're going to use the is implementation of the neural style transfer. I've been through uh, a lot of implementations. The best one, in my opinion, is the one uh, by Justin Johnson on GitHub. But it's a bit of a pain to to uh, to run because you have to use your own computer and you need to have a GPU, otherwise it takes forever. But it gives the best results. Here. I'm going to use uh, Jeremy's, Jeremy's implementation because it runs on Google Collab and with Google Collab you can use uh, Google's GPU to run to run your stuff and so it's pretty quick and you don't have to install anything on your machine you just run it in the browser so here you, s you choose style transfer and we're going to load this one the PyTorch style transfer and this is a Python notebook. Okay, so it takes a while to load this 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 one. I don't know why. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow. So that's how it looks like. So those are the hyperparameters, and I'm going to show you what parameters you should use. And there are, there's another set of parameters that control which layers of the uh, CNN, which is the VGG19, we are going to use. So here I'm going to, I'm going to tell. I'm also going to show you which one you should use. Okay, so uh, here in this Im implementation, it gets the content and the style images from the web. You can also use your own images and upload them to your... Uh, you upload them here, files. Okay, so it's got to connect first. So if you want to use your own, your own images uh, that are uh, sitting on your on your computer, you need to upload them. Okay, so what you do is that you just upload. So you just upload. You upload your content image, you upload your uh, style image right here, and then Here, you can add for your content image. You can add, I don't know, something equal, and you just copy, copy paste the name of your image, just like that. Whatever you have uploaded, something like that. Same, same thing for the uh, style image. But here, I think it's easier to just put them somewhere on the web, like. Uh, like imager or whatever, because every time you you connect, you lose the the image here. It, it's not; it doesn't stay here. Every time you disconnect, it's it's gonna be gone. So every time you have to re-upload. So it's probably easier to uh, to put your image on the web and then access it uh, access it the same way it does here. So here. I, I went on the imager and I have uh, this example. So here I have the co a content image. 
and I'm gonna add that to the list of content images. So I'm gonna call it girl equal and you do control control V and I'm gonna add also and I'm gonna call it fiery and it's that one. I like this one because it's very abstract and it, the textures it has very nice textures. You can see the brush, the knife, knife marks, whatever. And I like that. Okay, so let's uh, copy image address and I'm gonna add it as a style. Control V. So that's another st the style. That's the style I'm gonna use. So here you choose. So I'm gonna use that ex girl and I'm going to use fiery okay so now let's talk about the settings uh, iterations 20 I think you can reduce to 10 it's not actually uh, 20 it's uh, 20 times 100 so it's 2000 iteration but I think 10 is enough 1000 iteration Image width, image image height, 512, 512. So it's uh, it's going to be it's a square. Uh, 512 looks pretty small, but uh, if you want to go larger, you may end up um, you may an, uh, run out of memory, or you may get disconnected by Google because uh, Google Colab doesn't like you to run big jobs terms of memory and whatever so let's leave it leave it at 512 content weight 1 it's fine the style weight I like my stuff pretty coarse so I'll use a style weight of 10 so I kind of I kind of want the style to be uh, pre predominant and uh, the TV the total the TV total variation weight I put it at 10 this is to get rid of noise the input image uh, I'm gonna use noise but be careful when you use noise every time you run the noise is different so the output may be different every time you run so 1 10 10 and noise I mean, you can use iteration 20 if you want, it's just going to take longer. Now, for the content layer and the style layers, that's very important. Now, what I use for the content is a rectified um, uh, a linear unit, rectified linear unit, so R E L U, and I'm using nine. So what does that mean? Nine. Nine means that it's going to be the numbering that uh, this guy is using is uh, sequential. So conv, for example, conv one one. This layer is uh, conv underscore one. This is conv underscore two. This is conv underscore three. Conv underscore four. Conv underscore five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and the uh, rectify lin linear units is the same they follow the same convention so ReLU uh, RELU 9 is gonna be this one so pretty deep pretty deep in the uh, CNN meaning it's uh, it's going to look for the for the larger features style layers okay i'm going to change what this what is using i'm going to use relu r e l u uh, one r e l u three r e l u five r e l u nine RELU 13 
so for the stars it's one three five nine thirteen this is one three five nine thirteen uh, in my opinion the uh, RELU gives better result than the than the conv than the uh, convolutional uh, layers it's just crisper so that I like them best so to me use those and don't change it I think this is optimum okay besi besides that we can run I think we can run now so I'm gonna run and I'm gonna stop the video and go back until it's done so let's run this one so let's get rid of this so to run is very simple you just uh, click on run all run anyway okay we are back so it's just finished so let's uh, go down the notebook and see where the results are okay so once again this is the content image this is the style image I like this implementation because it shows you exactly what you are using so you cannot make a mistake and the other cool thing Okay, let me see output image the input input image it sh clearly shows the noise noise image and then the results are very nicely presented because after every 100 iteration it shows you the currently generated image and it also shows shows you the uh, the losses for the style the content the total variation and the sum so you can see if it's done converging or whatever so if it if it seems that it has converged you can actually uh, you can actually interrupt the exec execution and you can recover the generated image by just clicking on so you can interrupt and then you click on this one and you're going to get that picture you don't have to wait until uh, all the iterations are performed you can just interrupt and go here and click on this to get this picture so this picture now I can save so I'm just gonna save it so that I can, I can see it in uh, GIMP so let's start GIMP now as I said before Every, because you are using a, a random image as your input every time you run you're gonna get a different uh, image so if you don't like one that you are, you are getting you can just rerun and you're gonna get another one completely different so let's load up the, the generated image so here it is so as you can see the uh, uh, you, you get the uh, the texture of the style the style image and you kind of get the uh, the content image but very faintly you basically get the the outline and this is the the type of uh, thing I like I like uh, very abstract uh, stuff and I like to see the texture, I like to see the brush marks, I like, I like to see the knife marks, I like to see the, the texture of the uh, oil paint basically so that's what I like so depending on what you like you may want to you know change the parameters a little bit so maybe we can run again and see what we get just for fun to see if we get a completely different image or not so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna rerun uh, so let's let's just rerun with the exact same thing and see what we get see if it's different so you do you just do run all and it's just gonna redo the whole thing and it's gonna take five minutes so I'll be back in five minutes and we are back live so let's see what the results are again I'm using the exact same parameters and, and uh, the only difference is that the, ra the random the noise the random noise input image is different so let's see what we are getting so those are all the uh, intermediate images and this is the, the end at the end is the 
generated image. So let's save it. And I'm going to load it into GIMP. And you, you're going to be able to see that it's completely different. You see? So if you want to do some testing and compare different configuration of parameters, you should really use the same uh, random noise uh, input image otherwise you're gonna go you're gonna go crazy because it's always changing so I mean you could run this three four five times and see what you like uh, what you like best uh, the other things you can do is I mean there are many things you can do I mean you can change the content weight instead of one you put two or you put five uh, I mean, if you want, you can start from uh, the content or the style or whatever. If you s if you start with the content or the style, or, um, you don't need really the, the TV weight. So in that case, you can put this guy to zero. But here, since we are starting from uh, a random, random noise picture, we need to control the noise. So that's why you need to have something here, not just zero. Uh, in terms of the uh, content layers and style layers, uh, I think those are optimum. I wouldn't change them. So only play with the those guys, in my opinion. But you can you can try. Uh, what else? Okay. So what I'm what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna keep the that fiery style image, and I'm gonna run the other. Uh, input image that are here. So I'm going to run the uh, San Francisco. Yeah, I'm going to run that San Francisco first. So let's see how it looks like. So this is the image, the target image. So let's run that one. So San, San, on those Oh, it's yeah, San underscore Francisco. Francisco. San Francisco, correct. And let's run that. So run time, run all. And I'll be back in uh, five minutes. Okay, and we're back. So let's look at the, the results. So this is the input, San Francisco, this is the fiery star image. The input is another random noise picture. Those are the uh, intermediate results. And this is our, the result. And I'm not gonna, I don't need GIMP anymore because I mean you, you could run this thing several times, get different results, but I mean the the appearance of the generated image is the same, it's just that the distribution of color is probably going to be a little bit different. So this is the the San Francisco one. That's the result. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. That implementation also gives you the uh, content, content, style, and the generated image on the right side, which is kind of nice. So if you want to have more uh, of the uh, of the target image in your uh, output image what you do is that you can s simply increase the content weight instead of one use two or five okay that's all that's all you need to do to get more of the uh, target image into the generated image so now let's do another one I think the next one is the one of the cat. Yeah, this one. So the cat. Let's see how it looks like. The cat. This is the cat. It's more like a kitty. So let's do that one. Let's run that one. So I just need to change this from San Francisco to cat, and that's all we need to do. And then run time, run all. It's very easy to use very easy to use that Google Collab. Very nice. So I'll see you in five minutes.
we are back. So let's see the results. Okay. So this is the result. I mean, I like this kind of picture. It's very abstracty, and you get the uh, and you get the texture of the style image. I mean, if you think about it, it's not really the neural style transfer is simply is really a texture texture transfer thing. It's really all all, all that is. You transfer a texture to another to another image. So that's I think that looks very nice. Okay, so let's do the next one. The next one I think is the dog, and I think I'm, that's going to be the end of it. Uh, so the next one is the the dog. Let's see how it looks like. Dog. Yep, it's a dog. So there it is. That's your target image. So let's change cat from cat to dog, and let's run that. So all you have to do is to run time, run all, and let it let it run. So I'll see you in five minutes. And we are back. Well, let's let's see if it's if it's finished because it's been less than five minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's finished. Ah, uh, yep. So here is the result. Yeah, I like it. You just have uh, like basically the outline of the target image, and the rest is all style image, which is exactly what I want. But uh, you may have to make slight adjustment if you think it's too coarse or too abstracty. Okay, well I could run this thing uh, forever, but uh, I think I'm going to stop here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like, if you like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe. You can do one of the three or all three. So I'll see you around. Bye bye.